Hey, this is Mad Movie Mark with the Mad Movie Mark Movie Review. Thank you for joining me as I review the 1991 French drama movie about art, La Belle Nawazus. Hey, well, trust me, I understand completely. I felt the same way through most of this movie. I'm reviewing every movie that has 100% fresh rate in Rotten Tomatoes. I'm giving them all a score of 1 to 10. After I watch them and score them all, I will rank them from worst to best. I started in the 1927 movie era. Now I am at 1991 with La Belle Nawazus. This movie has 100% fresh rating for the critics and an 82% fresh rating from the audience. This movie is four hours long and is about the artistic process from start to end. So from choosing your model to sketching your model in the sketchbook to hours of writers slash artist block to finally having your um, grand masterpiece on display for everyone to see. Um, so in the first hour of this movie, we are introduced to Edward Frenhofer. Uh, we, he is at his barn slash art studio. Uh, with him is his former model slash now wife Liz and another couple named Nicholas and Mary Ann. There's also another guy who I don't know if he even matters in this movie. <laughs> uh, he's in the very beginning at the very end and he's mostly just drinking alcohol uh, throughout all of his scenes. Um, so while Edward Frenhofer is with the boys, he uh, is talking to them about how he once had this idea for a grand masterpiece called the La Belle Nawazus. His then model, now wife Liz, was going to be the model of this painting. Uh, he tried to paint it, but for whatever reason, it didn't work out. He abandoned the idea, and um, you know, and he just never got to complete his grand masterpiece. Uh, Nicholas chimes in and says, "Hey, you know what? I don't know why you're not using Liz anymore, uh, but my girlfriend Marianne is attractive. She's young. I think she's just the one for your La Belle Nawazus." Now, of course, Edward Frenhofer is elated by this information. He's excited to finish his masterpiece. So he says, great, have her meet me tomorrow at the barn, and we'll get everything going. Uh, now, Nicholas has to go home and explain to Marianne that he has offered her up for this position. And, of course, she is extremely upset by this. Um, she saw the kind of art that he creates she knows that he's going to want to paint her in the nude, and she's not comfortable with it, and uh, she frankly doesn't want to do it. She eventually does do it, though, so the next day she shows up at uh, Friend Hoffer's barn, and she's ready to go. That's the first hour of the movie. Uh, so the second hour of the movie starts with him sketching her fully clothed uh, for 20 minutes, and I'll show you a clip of that riveting piece of footage here. Okay, so after these 20 minutes go by where he's sketching her in a sketchbook, he then tells her to go upstairs and disrobe, and he's going to now sketch her for another 20 minutes nude in his sketchbook. Um, so that's another 20 minutes. So we're an hour and 40 minutes into the movie. Um, we are then, I believe after this, we are given a little bit more information about Liz. So she, uh, kills endangered animals slash protected birds on her land and she taxidermies them. Um, I don't think this ever comes up again in the movie. <laughs> I don't even know why it's important. Maybe it's, they just needed some kind of story to give her to make her interesting. Uh, really not sure, uh, but anyway, that's what she does in her uh, time off, which is always she kills animals and taxidermies them. So after that, we're shown back to the art studio. Um, now, a lot of this movie is Edward um, Frenhofer having a lot of like like artist slash writer's block, where he's trying to different things, different positions to get Marianne into, to really get to know her and get to know her body and get to know um, the lines 
that he needs to create. And by doing this, she's put in a lot of very uncomfortable <laughs> positions for very long periods of time uh, that she doesn't want to be in, that are painful. Um, she complains about the positions that she's in. And he basically says, like, uh, I'm a struggling artist. What, you, you don't think I'm feeling pain right now? You should feel the same pain I'm feeling. It's only fair. Uh, so... Um, there's a lot of back and forth with that about her not wanting to be there and about him trying to find that same spark, that same motivation and just that same spark that he had when he was trying to paint Liz. He's trying to find that again, uh, but he's having a really difficult time. Um, in the background, Nicholas is also very saddened for what he has done <laughs> to Marianne. He feels very bad about it. Uh, he's worried that... Because Liz was once a model, and now Marianne's a model, that Marianne's going to have some sort of affair with um, Edward, and that he's going to lose her, and that he really messed up. Um, that's his kind of struggle throughout the movie. Now, with Liz later, like Liz, for some reason, she really eggs on um, Marianne to do this painting. She really pushes her to do it. She almost like kind of guilt trips her into doing this <laughs> at one point. Attendez, il vous a demandé de revenir. Oui. Mais je suis pas venue pour ça. Je suis pas faite pour ça. Marianne, je vous en prie, essayez. Vous savez pas à quel point c'est important pour lui. Um, but then later in the movie, she is concerned that Edward is taking so much time with um, Marianne that he uh, might be painting her face, which she is uh, definitely against. She does not want uh, Edward painting Marianne's face. I don't know if it's because uh, it's more like intimate or if because he once painted her face at one point, but she is definitely against this. Um, painting uh, the face. So they go back and forth a lot where she doesn't want to do the painting and she's in these bad positions and she's hurting and she's upset at him and you know he's just upset that he can't he, he doesn't really care about her as a person but he cares about her as a model to where uh, she's not in the right positions or she's not holding the position long enough or um, she's not doing exactly what he needs her to do. At some point later in the movie, they are able to laugh and have some fun, um, when he kind of falls off a stool, uh, but then we get right into, like, the seriousness of what's going on. Uh, we later learn that, um, in, in a very good acting performance by Liz, Liz is kind of not important through most of the movie, I would say, except for the very end. She gives this really great speech uh, to Edward about how at the beginning she thought that this was like a new beginning for Edward, that like this would light a fire for him, this would be able to complete his greatest piece of artwork, that it would really make him animated again and make him full of life, full of pep and vinegar. But as he's gone on with this painting, she's realized that it's actually the end of something and not the beginning of something. Um, and she's just concerned about how much he, of himself he's putting into not only the painting, but how much of himself he's putting into Mary Ann. And I would say maybe she gets a little jealous at the end too, just like Nicholas is getting a little bit jealous. Um, at the end of the movie, he finally finishes the painting. Uh, he shows it to Mary Ann. Now, Liz said you shouldn't look at the painting at the end because he's not going to be able to protect you. And you have no idea what that means <laughs> until the end of the movie where she looks at the painting and she just hates it. Uh, and she later says it's because she really saw herself, the broken person that she's become during this process, how she was lifeless, how she was listless, how she wasn't happy. She really saw herself in that painting. Now, for whatever reason, he decides that he's not going to use that painting anymore. He's going to wall it up behind <laughs> behind um, a bunch of bricks that he's laying. He pretty much has an open space in the wall. He puts the painting facing, um, the face facing towards the wall and bricks it all up and then paints something completely different <laughs> and then unveils that as uh, La Belle No Wazous. And this new painting doesn't have a picture of her head. Now, we never saw the original painting, so I don't know Maybe it did have a picture of her face. I don't know. Probably did because she said she saw the sadness 
and the loneliness and the despair in the first painting. So it probably had a face, uh, but the second one doesn't have a face. And the second one is what he shows everyone. At the end, you can tell that uh, Marianne is definitely upset because she went through all that for what? <laughs> I mean, as a person, she changed. As a person, everyone, I guess, changed a little bit, except for maybe Edward. Uh, but what was really the point of all of that she went through? Um, just self-discovery, owning her own body, becoming her own person, maybe. Um, but does she have to... I, I don't know. It just seems really weird to me. Uh, so at the end of the movie, she ends up leaving Nicholas. Liz and Edward end up staying together. And that's uh, the entire movie, four hours long. Uh, so I'm going to be honest. I thought this movie was incredibly boring. Um, I appreciate the artistic process that's being shown here. I've never seen a movie before where they go through like the sketching of the art, where they go through, um, you know, before the painting, they go through the different methods of um, posing and all that stuff. I just assumed that like a painter would just start painting. Like I didn't even, for some reason, I didn't even think about the whole sketching process. It's interesting to know about that. It's interesting to see that. Uh, I just don't know if you need, like, four hours of it. It was honestly... I mean, it's not even that it's a long movie. I watched War and Peace, which was six hours long, and that movie just flew by. This movie has taken me 18 days to film <laughs> a review because uh, it was just so hard to get through. Not as hard as Stalker, which is the hardest movie I've ever probably gotten through. But this was, this was an incredibly slow-paced hard movie to get through. And I think what even made it even harder for me is I thought that Marianne was just treated so badly for everyone throughout this movie and there was really no reason like for it to happen. I mean, sure, she ultimately decided to be this model. Um, it was her decision in the end. Uh, there were there were times when she could have left, I guess. Uh, but for some reason, she felt like the need to, I don't know, to help him finish his grand masterpiece or maybe to help her discover who she was. Uh, but through this process, I mean, did she really have to be treated this poorly? And to be perfectly honest, I'm also not a huge fan of uh, a movie where the female character is, like, nude through the whole movie. Now, I like women empowerment movies, and I guess in this movie, at the end of it, you're supposed to feel like she's empowered because she left Nicholas and because she took her life back. But how is she empowered if she's, like, if she's naked through the whole movie, posing for this guy in ways she doesn't want to, and, um, you know, just doing things she doesn't want to do. Uh, it, it just it doesn't make any sense to me. Um, I, and I have said before during these reviews that maybe some of these deeper movies like this one, maybe I just don't get it. Uh, and it's possible that I just don't get, like, why this movie is great. It's the whole showing the artistic process from start to finish, I don't understand it. Um, I mean, are the great reviews from guys who want to see this girl naked? I have no idea. I have no idea. Uh, I, it's hard for me to believe that if you take a general population of the public and you put them inside of a movie theater or you put them inside of any place that's showing a movie and you show this four-hour movie, that any of them are going to think it's it's great. <laughs> that's where I come from. I, I don't have any film background. I'm just like a regular person who would just like see a movie in a movie theater. And this movie is just boring to me. And it's, it's not, it's not my type of movie, I guess. The acting is good. Um, the actress who plays Liz at the very end of the movie, where she kind of gives her two cents about things, does a very great job. Um, Michelle Piccoli, who played Eduardo, I thought he did a really good job as well. I mean, it can't be easy to just, like, have a camera on you for, like, four hours. I don't, I don't know if he's doing the artistic parts of this movie. I'm assuming he's not. But to have a, and have a camera on you for four hours and just be, like, pretend like you're doing art. <laughs> and the same for, like, Marianne, to have a camera on you for four hours and be, like, you're going to be nude. I think there's some irony here that she, as an actress, she's doing a movie... Uh, in a nude role about a woman who doesn't want to be nude. <laughs> um, but anyway, the movie was okay. 
It was very hard for me to get through. It was very hard for me to finish. I wouldn't say that I ever, like, was fully invested in this movie. I won't say that I was ever, like, it really grabbed my attention 100%, which is why it took me so long to finish. Um, but I finished it. I'm proud of myself for finishing it. I got through it. That's an accomplishment for me. And I give it a 7.5 out of 10. And a lot of that is purely for the artistic merits the fact that I've never seen a movie describe art like this and show art like this and show the process like this. Seven and a half out of ten. Thank you. I hope you join me next time when I review a movie, Laura Dern movie uh, from Jurassic Park, one of the greatest, one of my favorite movies of all time. Uh, Laura Dern in the movie The Rambling Rose. Thank you. I hope you have a great day.